Good evening, Papua New Guinea, and welcome again to Football First. Unfortunately, no Marco Vendetti here tonight. So let's just get straight into it. Now, big news down here in Port Moresby as the local organizing committee for the tournament launched the official emblem and slogan for the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup. Now, that was held over at the Laguna Hotel, and special guests included the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, Peter O'Neill, as well as the Minister for Sport and Tourism, Justin Chichenko. Now, I was uh, very fortunate uh, to be allowed access into the area. And let's take a look at some of the highlights from the launching. important that we recognize the contribution of women in our society. And this particular tournament will reflect further contributions they will make to ensure that the image of the country continues to be advanced. And of course, we must recognize them and thank them for that contribution. We acknowledge many of the women in our communities who continue to make outstanding contribution to our nation building, either big or small, but they are significant contribution to nation building. Women on the football pitch at the FIFA World Cup tournament in November and December this year will be outstanding role models for our young Papua New Guinean children, particularly the female children. This is an example of what can be achieved through commitment and determination as expressed by our young ladies. I hope our country and our young girls throughout the country will find inspiration from this tournament and ensure that it further advances each female child in the possibilities in our nation in order for them to be better citizens and for them personally to have a better standard of living uh, in our country. Sports is a very important part of Papua New Guinea. We are an active community. Papua New Guineans are active people. So our government's commitment in encouraging many of these sporting events so that we can continue to have healthy living, and particularly more so at the grassroots level. Many of you know the PNG Games, which hosts thousands of our young men and women throughout the country, that continues to be an important part of the advancement of sports in our country. We want to see many of our children continue to be involved more actively. Sport is a great way to encourage great discipline for them and may have a healthier lifestyle into the future. We encourage many of the schools in their curriculums to encourage sports as a way of life and a commitment for the young to promote excellence in themselves and in the sports that they pursue. We know that the good Minister for Sports and Tourism and the uh, good active Minister for Sports and Tourism, I'm sure certainly will be traveling around the country encouraging many of our young children to participate not only in soccer but all the other sports uh, that are played every weekend and every day of our lives in our communities. We have encouraging even further uh, for our athletes and our sportsmen and women to be elite sportsmen and women, where they can also have a career out of many of the sports that they participate in. Our country must participate this in these global events that are taking place. Sports is, a, is not only just a way of life, but it can be a career for many individuals, and we understand that in Papua New Guinea. Our government finally wants to thank FIFA, FIFA for the confidence that they have expressed in PNG. Uh, yes, we've got some challenges ahead of us, but Papua New Guinea has never been shy of those challenges. Many of you remember that, in fact, some of our critics wanted us to cancel the South Pacific Games because we were three years late, and nobody thought that we would deliver those games on time, on 
and, and one of the most important games in our country. We have delivered that successfully. Have confidence in yourselves. Have confidence in your country. Have confidence in your government that we will do the right thing so that our country can be proudly displayed with other members of the global community. It gives me great pleasure today that uh, today I now launch the FIFA Under-21 World Cup emblem that will continue to reflect our culture and diversity in the country. And of course, the slogan to inspire excellence in sports for our young Papua New Guineans in the future. Thank you and God bless you. We now have some of the best infrastructure facilities in the world. Look at the new National Football Stadium. Look at the Sir John Guy's uh, outdoor stadium, indoor stadium, the complex there. Look at the Jarama Aquatic Centre, an indoor centre. The Sydney Parade, the list goes on. We're getting these international events because now we have internationally accredited facilities that can host these events and we have Papua New Guinean staff and officials and management that can manage it from their experiences from the Pacific Games. And I thank people like Sir Costas Constantino and Sir John Gawani Kura and others through their own direction and wisdom and administration that has also helped us to get to where we are as well. It's a team effort. Nothing's done by individuals or else it would be a failure. And all of you here, one way or another, have a role to play in the success of these events. Because it needs everybody to work together as a team to make it happen. So with the FIFA World Cup now, only months away in November, we look forward to having these high profile countries coming to our shores. And uh, what a fantastic opportunity it is for our young Papua New Guinean women. They'll be playing against them and they'll be witnessing the spectacular of this sporting event, seeing some of the best teams of the world playing here on our grounds in Papua New Guinea. Yes, we've got a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do. And the PNG Sports Foundation with the leadership of uh, Peter Samueli Jr. and Mr. Graham Osborne as chairman, are leading the way with the FIFA World Cup and uh, organising committee to ensure that all our facilities will be ready on time for this competition. Our country, our government will not let you down. We are determined to make sure this is a successful event because the exposure that we get throughout the world is incredible. Very interesting news uh, given by the Prime Minister uh, Peter O'Neill and of course the Minister for Sport and Tourism Justin Chichenko. Stay with us. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at what PNG Football Association President David Chung had to say as he was also a guest of honour at the Emblem Launch. See you soon. Historic for our property and 20 women's team, who will be the first team from our nation to take part in the FIFA World Cup. Welcome back to Football First. Now, PNG Football Association President David Chung was also a special guest at the Emblem launch, and he did express a lot of gratitude as he presented to the various delegates his plans and visions for football in Papua New Guinea and throughout the region. Welcome to this historic occasion for football in our country. The launching of the official emblem and slogan for the eight editions of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup, which is to be hosted here in Papua New Guinea from the 13th of November to the 3rd of December 2016. On behalf of the Papua New Guinea Football Association and the football family of our country, I would like to thank the Prime Ministers, the Ministers for Tourism, Arts and Culture and Sports, all Cabinet Ministers, including the Chief Secretary, for giving us the blessing to host this historic event for football in the country. Historic for our Papua New Guinea Under-20 women's team, 
who will be the first team from our nation to take part in the FIFA World Cup. Historic too for all women's footballers in the country who will be able to watch world-class players in action here in Papua New Guinea. Historic for our nation who will host a FIFA World Cup on our home soil for the first time, something which many of the 209 FIFA members associations aspire to do. Papua New Guinea will be recorded in history and archived in the FIFA Museum in Zurich, Switzerland as one of the few countries in the world that has hosted a FIFA World Cup. The launch tonight of the official albums and slogan coincides with International Women's Day. And the hosting of this tournament will help to inspire our women and provide them opportunities to excel. Our official slogan for the tournament is to inspire, to excel. We are sure our women will excel as they contribute to the successful hosting of these tournaments. To show the world the real Papua New Guinea, a beautiful and unique tourist destination with a safe environment to inspire international guests to visit. To show the world we can excel and host a successful high-class tournaments in our well-equipped facilities. The legacy left behind in this World Cup will be enormous for our people, especially for women and football in the country, and also the skills they learn in managing such world-class events. I thank all respective government agencies, the private sectors, and individuals who work in collaborations to support these tournaments. My sincere appreciation, appreciation and thanks to the Prime Minister, Honorable Peter O'Neill, Minister for Tourism, Art and Culture and Sports, Honorable Justin Pacheco, Chief Secretary, Ambassador Isaac Lopari, and Cabinet Ministers, who have all given support to ensure we are able to host this tournament. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic to get the um, to get the emblem above the line, to get the emblem in the public uh, in the public space, and and from here on, yeah, I think full steam ahead to November the 13th and kickoff. It's exciting uh, for the local organising committee. I think it's exciting for the football family of Papua New Guinea, and it's exciting for the country in general. So, no, we're really really happy to have it uh, to have the emblem launched and to have something that we can uh, we can look at now. It's not just uh, stadiums and training grounds. We've actually got a, an identity and a logo moving forward. So yeah, very 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 happy. I don't think we can ever relax um, by any stretch of the imagination. The clock is ticking. The, the, the kickoff is scheduled for the 13th of November. But no, sure, for sure, we can, um, we can start to move forward. We can start to plan um, some, of those, uh, some of those things that people will start to see. We've got a lot of plans that we've been uh, preparing in the background, and we've just been waiting for, um, for that opportunity to, um, to really launch. So, yeah, look, look forward to the next, uh, the next few months as we, we move forward to November and kickoff. Now, just to finish, Denise. Uh, during the Pacific Games, they, they had what we call milestones, 100 days out, 500 days out, something similar we can expect from uh, the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup? Jeremy, I wish we had 500 days out. I really do. Um, look, our next milestone is, is realistically 100 days to go, which is August the 5th. Um, and then from that point, we're really into delivery mode. We expect the participating countries to come for an inspection um, of Papua New Guinea. All 16 teams will be in country. We expect that to be around the end of August. But for sure, 100 days to go, August the 5th marks really um, the, the last section um, of the preparation. Not forgetting, of course, the OFC Nations Cup in May and June, and that's an opportunity for the football family of Papua New Guinea to enjoy some football here in the country prior to what we think is the big event um, later on this year. It's a very good development, positive development. Uh, any type of uh, regional and international event that we host or comes to our shows, we should welcome it uh, because it's an opportunity for us to uh, promote uh, our nation and our people as a destiny for everything, for sports, for uh, tourism, for business, for investment. And that gives us the opportunity to create a uh, you know, uh, pathway for our young people, especially creating jobs, creating income, creating an uh, opportunity that they would not otherwise have. So, yeah. We, we uh, are looking to become a city that is becoming a regional hub for sports and I think, uh, you know, nobody should complain about it. We should welcome it with open arms. Uh, but uh, let me also say this to that. 
uh, the the fact that all these uh, um, you know regional and global events are coming to Port Moresby is also because we have done the hard work. We have uh, you know uh, start to begin and on the way to changing and transforming our city. We are cleaning it up. We are dealing with violence. We are reducing violence. We are dealing with uh, you know some of our bad image, and the world is applauding that and appreciating that, and that's why it gives the confidence for them to um, allow us to host these events. From the Pacific Games last year, now to the Under 20 uh, FIFA Women's World Cup, we have the you know uh, Rugby League World Cup next year, and then we also have uh, APEC, and in between we have all, all those other events. So. Um, it's paying dividend the, the, the hard work that we have been doing in the last uh, five to six years. It's paying dividend. Now coming up after the break, we take a look at Medang FC midfielder and captain Max Segum. So, so I am to change him, change him style of living. In I'm new mixing room. I blow a team football fest. Welcome back to Football First. Now in February, I had the pleasure of traveling over to Medang to cover the match between Medang FC and Lay City Dwellers. And I had the incredible opportunity to meet up with Max Segum, the captain and midfielder for Medang FC, and who surprisingly wants to become a policeman after he graduates. Let's take a look at Max Segum. Meet Max Segum. The Medang-born midfielder has been a stalwart for both his hometown club Medang FC and with stints on the national scene, has proven himself capable as he seeks to find glory for his squad once again. One year I've been going, I've been representing the under 20. I've been one year, Alvin. I've been under 20, I've been around New Zealand. Second year, I've been around Oakland. I've been Alvin. Bania, Jamal, Blagoran, Third me Blagoran no Indonesia, still the same plan one, me Alvin, Wania, so kind of some. Madang got plenty of good the place now. For a young player, the captaincy of Madang FC has proven to be a blessing. I feel some time me play on the money, young plan mangi, kind of some Madang and some produce in plenty of good player, and some Nilans. In 2015, the 24-year-old guided his club to the pinnacle of the Telecom National Soccer League Grand Final, albeit succumbing to a devastating 5-1 loss at the hands of a rampant Lay City dwellers. A feat he rates as a highlight of his career. For Segum, however, he believes that the success he has achieved has much to do with his teammates. Now I'm going to blast up out. Good players don't take care. Now I drain them to see me. So my best guys like team thing was him. To play big player, to play setting is the benchmark. So my best league will come, but still, anyone is trying to block him. Hikari had been a target for Madang the year before. A crushing eight nil loss late in the season had almost destroyed all hopes for the side. Although they did bounce back to beat the then defending champions in a shock win. Perhaps the upset of the year. Uh, time driving list of the game, cause him to go play. No can feel one him doubt on him. And to him kind of some one play. You miss our carry him got name. So we play boys, coach him cherry me play up and tongue play. When we go back again, come back again, and play more. Uh, where I know allow him to play long. He's a one man. Some of the boys, we play the game better. 
so we go coach and talk about how we can we can make it a similar round to the team will make it think positive we block a confident we block on home ground we block a crowd family over as a stop box at the moment the team will make it a positive so we can make it a carry we can make it a carry champion but we block a man who's David we can make it a more goliad so boys no doubt we can make it a win in the carry we can make it a home ground Surprisingly, he has opted for the constabulary as a future career option. Now, I'm going to recently me and planting and canon, illegal crimes, illegal town, town, town rates, no more, town rates. So, we need to call policemen so we can apply this law. Principal. Principal, yeah. Sometimes we play soccer. So, but look at me, but talk, yes. Medang FC were unable to qualify for the final series this season after failing to win much needed matches late on. That, however, has only firmed the resolve of the captain, and he had this message to give to the future of football in the country. So, no matter what, all boys in Brazil play Medang. Not really play Blunda. Even the war in making the finals, still in the play. The soy music, the Lamarang stuff. So, so I am to change him, change him style or living the milieu. So, I am one black and something like planting money or to change the place of work. Ronnie drives it in, lays it back to the ceiling with a jam. Welcome back to Football First. Now, over the weekend, we had uh, very interesting statistics that happened in the matches between uh, Welgris, Morabe United, and PK Rapatona, and that ended with a 1-0 victory to the home side down here in Port Moresby, while over in Ley, it was a, not surprisingly, a nil or draw between Ley City Dwellers and Hekari United FC. Now, before they headed in, or before they head into this weekend's matches, uh, here's the ladder as it stands. We have Lay City and Hikari, both on four points. Sorry, both on ten points up at the top of the table with uh, three wins apiece, and of course that a solitary draw. While for Pique Rapatona, uh, they were fortunate to garner a one-goal victory over Welgris. Brilliant goal taken by Philip Steven. And what happens is uh, this weekend we have another massive round of matches uh, over in Ley. It'll be the match between Rapatona, Pique Rapatona and Welgris Morabe United. While most definitely what many have called the grand final preview will be held on Saturday. And that is between Ley City Dwellers and Hekari United and we look forward uh, MTV will of course be bringing you that match uh, which will be held over at Bicini on Saturday at 2 p.m. Now also tomorrow Thursday the 10th of uh, March we've got the Port Moresby Corporate Futsal Challenge that will be held over at the Sir John Guy's uh, indoor complex. I'm looking forward to it. I don't think I'll be participating but I'm pretty sure we're going to see some great action happening there uh, it starts on starts tomorrow on thursday and goes all the way through until sunday afternoon great prices can be taken from there in fact uh, i've been told um, you can pick up uh, cash prizes for the winners and also there's an opportunity to win tickets to uh, the 2016 under 20 women's world cup which will be held right here in papua new guinea now we're going to leave you tonight on football first i've been a little bit too serious so here's uh some of the crazy things that happen in football good night Papua New Guinea.